Good morning, everybody. Welcome to story time. I'm Rachel, one of the naturalists here. And today we're gonna be reading a book that has a few more words than some of our other books, but honestly, that's kind of why I love this one. Um, this is The Bug Girl, Maria Marion's Scientific Vision by Sarah Glenn Marsh illustrated by Filippo Fonzo. So this is a book that's actually available in our gift shop. I totally stole it from them <laughs> for this story time today. And this is the story of one of the first women scientists to study bugs. Back in a time when people believed that animals just kind of popped up out of the ground spontaneously. <laughs> um, so this is a pretty cool story. And uh, yeah, so let's let's read The Bug Girl. Maria Marion's Scientific Vision. I love these illustrations in here. There we go. Hi, Becky and Erlina. All right. As a young girl growing up in the 1650s, Maria Marion was curious about everything. Her hometown of Frankfurt, Germany, was full of creatures that crawled, flew, and scuttled. Butterflies were her favorite insect because their wings held a rainbow of colors. She could watch for hours as the butterflies flitted around the flowers blooming near her home. Same. <laughs> and day after day inside her home, Maria watched her stepfather, Jacob, do something that looked to her like magic. With just a few brush strokes, he captured blooming flowers and ripe apples on his canvas. Jacob liked studying plants because they stayed still, and he painted them exactly as they looked. Maria longed to make her own magic. Jacob gave her everything she needed in order to paint, tools, lessons, and best of all, he gave her encouragement. Unlike her stepfather, after only a few months, Maria grew tired of painting objects that stayed still. She wanted to paint things that crawled, flew, and scuttled, things that moved. Ooh. She was still curious about all the colorful creatures outside her window, from beetles to moths to spiders, just waiting for her to copy their likeness on canvas. Maria wanted to study insects and paint them just as they looked, even if she would have to keep her work a secret. If her neighbors and friends caught her studying bugs, everyone in town would be scared of her. Can you imagine? I'm so glad we don't live in a town or a time like that now. Unlike Maria, most people in her time didn't want to look at or learn about insects because of superstitions. They believed creatures such as butterflies, moths, and frogs were born from mud puddles in a process known as spontaneous generation. This always gives me a giggle, but people used to literally think that animals would just randomly pop out of the mud. <laughs> These people also believed insects were evil shapeshifters, like werewolves, and that anyone interested in such creatures was surely evil, too. If caught studying bugs, Maria could be considered a witch, put on trial, and punished. Still, she was determined to understand why such colorful creatures upset the grown-ups so much. But there was little printed information on natural history, the history of living things, especially when it came to insects. Maria hoped to fix that someday. She started by studying silkworms because they were one of the easiest creatures to find. When she was sure no one was looking, Maria gently caught the worms and some of their eggs, hid them inside her errand basket, and brought them home where she could watch and draw them every day. Maria often touched those silkworms, taking notes on how they then twisted, curled up, or played dead. She was learning so much just by watching them and their eggs, but she still didn't know what they liked to eat. She worried the silkworms were hungry. I wonder how she'll find out what they eat. Pretending to fill jugs with water as curious neighbors waved hello, Maria lingered in the silkworms' favorite hiding places to see how they acted in their natural habitat. By noting which plants the worms crawled on most and gathering some of those leaves for her worms to try, she soon learned their favorite snack, mulberry leaves. 
They chose the mulberry leaves over everything else Maria offered. Her first experiment with the silkworms, discovering what they ate, was a success. Look, she's painting them. After that, Maria often found herself inventing errands to run so that she could gather supplies for her silkworm studies. She tirelessly collected, observed, and sketched until one day something amazing happened. The silkworm eggs hatched. Maria fed the tiny larvae that emerged with their favorite snack. And all the while, she painted. Did you guys realize Maria is only 13 years old at this time? So she's doing some amazing groundbreaking work at 13 years old. Because she had trained as a flower painter, Maria included the silkworm's favorite blossoms and plants in her art. She wanted to share what she had learned about the silkworms with the townspeople so they wouldn't be afraid anymore. The more Maria learned and painted, the more questions she had about how the silkworms grew and changed. When the newly hatched larvae grew bigger, they looked just like mature silkworms. And when the worms produced silk threads to form cocoons, Maria prodded and squeezed them, trying to understand what was happening. She called the cocoons date pits because they felt hard like the center of a date or peach. Those are fruits. She knew something was happening inside the cocoon, something she couldn't see. Maria had to be patient, so she painted while she waited for a change she could observe. One afternoon, small creatures finally broke free of Maria's cocoon, only they weren't silkworms anymore. Oh boy. They were beautiful moths with paper white wings and frilly antennae. Maria learned two things that day. First, that there was no such thing as spontaneous generation. And second, that grown-ups were sometimes wrong. <laughs> Excited to learn more, Maria crept through her neighbor's backyard, smiling and waving whenever anyone looked her way. The moment she was alone, she collected every new type of caterpillar she spotted. She painted hairy ones, slimy ones, and speedy ones, always curious to see how they changed and what they ate. She watched them transform into beautiful butterflies and moths. Their shape-shifting was part of nature, not magic after all. It was better because the insects did it on their own through the process of metamorphosis. <laughs> Maria still longed to share all she had learned about caterpillars and their amazing transformations with the town people, but because of her young age and because she was a woman, she felt no one in town would believe her. Aww. Secretly, Maria often wondered about what types of insects and other creatures she might find outside of Frankfurt. She'd have to wait until she was married and could leave home. Oh, that's too bad. Then she and her husband moved to Nuremberg, Germany, where at just 23 years old, Maria taught other girls how to observe, draw, and paint just like she did. She gave her students the tools they needed to study whatever interested them, along with a healthy dose of her curiosity. And when Maria had a family of her own, she shared her curiosity with her daughters, too. Aww. I think her daughter Dorothea ended up being a scientist, too. <laughs> when she wasn't giving lessons, and sometimes when she was, Maria continued to collect and paint small animals that crawled, flew, and scuttled. She even began to paint ones that slithered and swam. From big hairy spiders to lizards to tadpoles, there were so many creatures to study that Maria was able to publish a whole book of her art, and then another. At long last, she was sharing what she knew with the world, but she wasn't done discovering new animals yet. <laughs> Maria's passion for insects eventually took her even farther from home, all the way to Suriname, a small country in South America. She traveled to Suriname by boat on a scientific journey, one of the first of its kind. Maria had learned about colorful lizards, bigger spiders, and different winged insects there, and she was curious about all of them, of course. Luckily, she had an assistant to help her collect and study these fascinating creatures, her 21-year-old daughter, Dorothea. Aw, see, I thought I remembered her. <laughs> 
In South America, Maria faced new challenges. There weren't any maps to guide her on her insect collecting expeditions into the rainforest, and the climate was hot and wet, slowing her attempts to search for new insects. The heat made her tire more easily, and the rain made bugs harder to find because they sought shelter from the downpours. Still, her passion for learning kept her exploring through dense rainforests and along the banks of rushing rivers, where she discovered amazing creatures to observe and paint. Wow. <laughs> After two years of exploring, Maria became ill and returned home. Yet not even sickness could keep Maria from her studies for long. She'd learned so much in Suriname that she now had enough paintings to fill a third book and one of the as one of the first female scientists to study insects she still wanted to share her findings with others and she kept collecting and observing bugs wherever she went Aww. because maria never lost her curiosity and fascination for creatures that crawled flew and scuttled a curiosity that had been sparked years earlier when she watched a silkworm transform into a beautiful moth. Aww. Well, that's the end of our book. And if you want to learn more about Maria and her life, you can read her biographies and find more information about her. But that's such a cool, inspiring story and a nice reminder to all of us that being a naturalist, being a scientist, really only starts with curiosity and if you're curious about things and you keep asking questions and looking and observing and watching we can all be scientists like maria even today cool well that's the end of our book today again that was the bug girl maria marion's scientific vision by sarah glenn marsh illustrated by filippo fonzo beautiful illustrations and if you want to see this book and so many others about being a scientist, about watching, observing, about bugs, and just appreciating all the small crawly things in our environment, uh, you can find a lot more books like this here in our gift shop. You're so welcome. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm going to get out of here now and go return this to the gift shop. But uh, we'll see you next week again at 10 a.m. for story time on Wednesday morning. And uh, hopefully if you want to come out with your little ones tomorrow morning for our outdoor play program, which is a come and go distanced sort of on your own event that Amanda and Deb host out on the front lawn. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. as well here at the Nature Center. Well, bye guys. Thanks for joining me.